Hello, um, my name is Adrian Duncan. I'm an Irish novelist and short story writer. Um, I am going to read um, a small section from my new book. It's a work of non-fiction called Little Republics. Um, it's a book about the Irish bungalow and it was published this uh, October 20th by the Lillipop Press. Um, and it is... Um, my, yeah, it's my first non-fiction book, and it's got coloured photographs and such things in it. Um, it's essentially a 30,000-word essay, or maybe a little bit more than that, um, with images interspersed. Um, I'm going to read a small section. So in between the chapters, um, there are fictional sections which describe two men building a bungalow um, in the countryside. Um, so I'm going to read a few of those um pages and um yeah i hope you enjoy it a second hand ford capri pulls up onto the side of a hedge lined road about a mile outside of town it is a bright breezy day in early autumn the trees are rattling the hedge is lush and dense a painted sign stands in the middle of the field Sights for sale. Cows graze quietly around. A young man and woman get out of the car. She has black hair and is wearing a white blouse and sky blue shirt. He wears brown, bell bottom corduroys, a tight check shirt, and a loosened tie. Together they cross the road and try to peer through gaps in the hedge. They walk back to the car. The woman takes off her shoes and they both climb gingerly from the door frames onto the bonnet and then the roof. They turn, look back over the hedge and into the open field. They imagine what it would be like to build a house and have a family there. Then they try to picture what this house might look like. So this section here is in between chapter one and chapter two. So on they go in this, in this way. I'll read a few of them. I don't want to stay too long or to bore people. You are standing in a field, waiting for a friend to arrive. The open blueprint of your future house is in your hands. It crimps and flaps in the breeze. You peer at the drawing, then drop your measuring tape to the ground and put your ruler and pencil back into the breast pocket of your shirt. Your friend pulls up at the entrance to the field, a long break in the hedge, and he walks up to you. For a while, you discuss where to start. He returns to his car and takes from the boots on builder's twine several timber, several timber pegs and the wheelbarrow contraption that the local GEA club used to mark out the lines of a football field. Following the layout and dimensions of the blueprint, you mark out the lines of the plan of the building and paint this pattern onto the grass, delineating the external and internal walls. A local builder with a digger comes down and the soil is broken. Following the lines of paint put down the ground, the foundations are dug out in strip-like trenches, about one metre deep and one metre wide. You and your friend place broken up bricks into the bottom of the trenches and rest rusty lengths of reinforcement on top. The next day, an orange ready-mixed cement truck arrives with its tilting, roaring barrel and it pours the concrete into the trenches. You and your friend shovel it along. You work into the late evening, levelling the concrete, at twilight, tired. At twilight, tired, you both drive away, leaving the site for a week or so until the concrete hardens on contracts. So the next section describes concrete blocks being delivered to the site and um, putting rubber down onto it and pouring more concrete and such things. Um, so I'm going to read one more section. You and your friend return with two of his younger brothers in tow. Together the four of you build the external, then internal walls. The concrete blocks rise up beyond the small copper pipes protruding from the four of sabs. For a quiet moment you stand beside a half-built wall in what will become a bedroom and you imagine a warm radiator fitted to this wall in less than a year's time. Slim white rectangles of aeroboard are slipped around and between the tile wall tiles, 
dropping down into the gap between the layers of the external wall. These walls rise up to windowsill, then lintel, then wall plate level. Cement mixer, blocks, nails, twine, spirit levels, chalk, sweat, stainless steel twist straps, rolls of felt, stacks of roof tiles, cigarette smoke, tea, plastic cups, lips, hair. The chimney is built up from the body of the building, extending above the height of the walls and two feet beyond what will be the ridge of the roof. It begins to drizzle. The grey, windowless house becomes somehow greyer. The frame is now wet and ruin-like. You all envisage your deaths. You continue. Okay. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to take part in this um, lovely advent calendar, and I hope you all have a nice Christmas and um, a good 2023. Okay. Thank you.